Hey you guys, this is Mama Boo on Kev Mac Videos. You know what it is. Stay tuned for my birthday video to drop May 30th. You guys, you know what it is. Mama Boo. Goes. Food that you give away? Yeah, it's a big warehouse. Like this building is big. Like I'm trying to figure out what we gonna do and talk to Kenneth about what we gonna do. And I mean, matter of fact, me and Kev are gonna walk through here and we're gonna show y'all how big it is. That freezer, you can back a truck up into that freezer. Oh no, we have space. For the dime moves in the lokes, for the six foes on spokes, Come on. for the OGs that did a dime, came back around on parole, for the home girls with the scrap game, little homies that gang bang, from Pelican Bay to YA, rearrange your mind frame. Yeah, I know what you've been through, uh, shit, you had to go tend to. Your mama gave birth on the turf, I know them killers you can't do. This for the lost generation, broke his head. Oh, you know, lifting weights, and I was on sport, they start calling me Big Miz. Original stutter box. He saw a fire who's probably a bishop, man, so you catch the blood. Yeah, Mac, video, video, you know, this is for sure, for sure. Yeah, Mac, video, video, open your soul. This is for sure. We have different offices and different other little um, rooms in here that's not occupied. That used to be a classroom and different other things with the youth or what have you. So, oh yeah, we have big space, a stage. I mean, we could. I mean, I could do whatever it is I'm trying to do. Just got to get the approval from Squirrel, and that's it. Well, Kenneth, <laughs> do you um feed the homeless, or you just feed anybody in need? Well, I've been doing a lot of networking and um, connecting with different people. So lately, I've been getting different people from movie sets that, you know, after the um, they feed the cast or whatever, they give me a call for me to pick up the lunches or what have, it, what have you. And that's what I've been doing lately is popping the trunk in my neighborhood, giving back to the people that actually raised me on many levels. You know, that if you want to call them the smokers or whatever you want to call them, they're actually, to me, my aunties and uncles that raised me when I was in the streets, you know, made sure that didn't nothing happen to me on them corners. You know, the same people that I that I sold to is the same people that I'm feeding. I hope that don't sound bad, but it is what it is. How do we get to this point? What made you want to do this? What made me want to do this is because I don't see nobody else helping. And I see so much self-inflicted bullshit going on and everybody prefer to take the stance to talk about people opposed to helping people and i've never been one that was cold-hearted outside of gang things but as far as in me to the core who i am i've always been one that give somebody my shirt off my back or someone that help someone you know so with me moving forward and going through college and being able to articulate myself on a more mature level and seeing things from a different perspective it's like why not can you speak to how good it feels in your heart and and your sanity that you actually are doing something for the same people you sold drugs to once upon a time um i mean just the conversations because i have a lot of conversations off cameras that i don't put on camera to where all the smokers per se know me you know the loud little girl fighting over here on the corner or whatever the case may be so for me to actually feed them and I know some of them don't even eat every day I mean it feels like I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing me talking to these young girls because you have different type of household uh, situations where you have a young woman that has been molested by an uncle or something like that and then a mama and a grandma and everybody know but ain't nobody doing nothing about it so you're forcing this young girl to accept what happened to her as well as suppress her feelings about the person that did it to her while y'all being cool with that and I feel like you know all of that really needs to be brought to the light because it's one of those things where that's keep hush hush no don't keep hush hush because you wonder why you have these girls gang banging these girls out here selling their body these girls on drugs dick pussy dope dynamite and then you want to blame her just wanting to go left when maybe something happened to her in the household that y'all to protect her and support her with as to why she's really like that but 
but everybody want to point the finger up to what she been doing since she was 16, 17 years old when this traumatization happened when she was five years old. But don't nobody want to speak on that because the uncle is still sitting at the table. The uncle is still coming over and the family is still acting like everything is okay when deep down in her spirit, she can't stand him and y'all don't understand why she's acting up. It's y'all fault. And I feel like somebody need to talk about that. And that's what I do. I talk to the young girls about it to help them get over it. But I need to start talking to people my age that's actually the reason these young girls is losing their damn mind and doing too damn much and don't have self-respect. Are you doing anything to help the kids? As far as in the kids, we say the young girls, but that's why I'm trying to get, I need you guys to vote. And that's why I'm trying to get on the council and become a community organization representative to where that job would in detail for me to speak with different communities, bring them together, uh, create a budget within uh, the city to do different things as well as find different resources and funding to fund like the parks for the kids with the, the football, the basketball, the softball. I mean, my thing is to see what's going on behind the curtain. Everybody talk about change, but ain't nobody doing shit for change. You're not grooming your kids to be in a position for change, and nor are y'all taking the initiative to be on a council. And to be honest, to be on a council is easy. Y'all just not putting forth the effort. So my whole thing is, as far as it being on a council, is to, <clears throat> my main focus is the kids and the elders. And I don't mean to say that like that with the people in between, but the people in between get off their ass and stop drinking and stop smoking at any damn moment. But the ones my age that won't help or want to help me and, you know, <clears throat> volunteer, whatever the case may be, then I'm down for that. But my main focus is the kids that's running through here with PTSD based on what's going on in the community with all this gang violence, with all these shoes, with the police brutality, I'm focusing on them getting them counseling, getting them recreation, and then the grandmas and the grandpas. They sitting at home taking care of all these damn kids that ain't theirs. Mm -hmm. So that's my main focus. So what position are you going for? Running for a community organization representative for the Harbor Gateway North community. So, are you on the ballot or no? Yes, I'm on the ballot. Y'all can request y'all ballot. And another thing, for the people that do not live within the actual um, district, you guys still can request your ballot. And I will have more information on my channel. Or you guys can reach out to me personally and I will let you know how do you go about voting for me and do not live in a district. How would they find you in your channel? Um, you guys can look me up at um, on IG at Mama Boo One Three Two M O M A B W O One Three Two, as well as my YouTube channel M O M A B W O B W O. And y'all may want to go run over there to that YouTube channel because I did interview different celebrities, all type of stuff that you wouldn't guess that I had sitting right here. Who's your favorite celebrity that you interviewed? My favorite that I interviewed. I would say Scrancho is my favorite, the comedian Scrancho, because he had me laughing from beginning to end. But uh, my my one of my other favorite is Chris the Glove, and I don't know if people are familiar with Chris the Glove, and he's the one who helped Dr. Dre start Aftermath. Um, so he was my one of my other favorites because I actually interviewed him a year ago, May 22nd, on his birthday. So I was at, uh, what is it, Paramount Studios, and he had an actual session, and let me interview him on his birthday. I would say the next one that was pretty good was um, Gorilla Blue, because this interview was very enlightening. It was, it was good. It was good, as well as I interviewed uh, Freeway Rick Ross, so, you know, I have so I can go down the list, but I'm going to stop right there. Go on over there to Mama Boo you channel. You're building YouTube your channel. library up. Right. Yeah. Yeah, y'all go to Mama Boo's YouTube channel. I've got to go over there and see Chris the Glove. I didn't see that one. Yeah, because on that one, he talked about how his brother dunked on Shug playing basketball. had his nuts on his neck. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was, that was a good one. So what made you want to get into interviewing people? Um, well, actually, I was on 88.9. KXLU, I was on a radio station for about a year. So I started out there, but it actually started out as an interview that I um, got in contact with DJ E Man, who's a legendary DJ from back in the day. Um, I got in contact with him, and I wanted to be interviewed on the radio and went up there, and everything just took off from there, my personality and everything. And he was like, We want you to be a co host. And I was a co host up there for a long time. So shout out to DJ E Man. So that 
was the start of it of me wanting to talk and i look y'all i could talk like for real for real, i could talk but that started and then it was more um business as far as in fi not financial but um what do you call it um what word am i looking for with lawyers and stuff it was um lawsuit that was going on before i was there at the radio station which kind of stopped that but at any day any moment maybe back up there but it was something that they had to uh they have to deal with it has nothing to do with me as to why i'm not on the radio so from leaving there i just started intimate talk with mama boo sitting on the couch talking to the camera and then just started getting interviews it, does your hood sit in westmont or athens athens and your office is located where this right here i believe would be Westmont, if I'm not, no, this is, this Athens. So you, you actually set up in your community that you was raised in? Oh yeah, I'm literally less than a mile away from where I grew up at. Okay. okay. So yeah, I'm in my community, serving in my community, giving back to my community, trying to rectify my wrongs with what I've done as a teen in my community, fixing it, but fixing it the way I want to fix it. Right. Yeah, that's a good thing. You mentioned how easy it is. People don't know how easy it is to run. Um, yeah, I mean... Can you explain to us to what, for, what a person has to do? To I mean, as far as community organization representative, what I did is stemmed, actually. Let me give you a little back of how it stemmed for me even actually starting to even want to run for um, this position. Is within the last two years... The South Bay Villa Apartments have had four murders. Um, it started out with the um, the guy Rayan, where the police killed in apartments, shot him up over 30 times in apartments. A week from that, one of our homeboys was killed at the Candlelight Visual. Fast forward to last year, another homeboy was gunned down in apartments. To February 15th, a girl that has been living in apartments, her mom has been there before my mom moved in, and she currently living there with her two daughters. She was killed in her apartment, and to me, enough is enough. You know, um, so my thing was I started reaching out to the council people to see what are they gonna do for these babies up in these apartments that have PTSD, and no one is, caring about them no one is giving services for counseling or anything They're, they don't even care about these babies over there so i started going to the city council meeting and lighting their ass up on the meeting like y'all need to do something and really challenging their responses to me letting them know that i do know something i'm not no dumb person to where one of the people that was on the meeting told me i should run for the city council what have you and then once i started looking at how to run and all that it's nothing more than to submit your name and your address and everything and they verify where you live at and a candidate statement and that's it. How many votes do you think you need? How many votes would I think I need for on the city council? I would maybe say like maybe a hundred because from my understanding it's not like the mayor like as we use for example which I am aware of like the mayor of Compton or whatever they votes like maybe two three thousand so it's not that many and that's more of a bigger race mm -hmm. so with the city council i would say maybe about 100 votes what are you doing to get those votes are you going door to door you have any campaigns going on yes i'm going door to door actually speaking to these people as well as i've posted different things on social media but more so out in public around in my section just jump out the car and just start talking to people and actually sign them up from their phone and my phone so it's more of being active on site because as i see with i don't know why we do this we do not never want to help each other i have so many people that actually know me and know that whatever i put my mind to i'm going to do that and they know that i'm not going to be back door side barring and none of that shit but i have people that be in my story on social media just looking like just just looking and it's one of those things where if y'all don't know that the city council the position that i'm running for i'm not going to get paid for this it's a volunteer uh position to where my thing is to see what's going on behind the curtain to help you guys you know different things to where like you know housing funding uh funding for this funding for that for me to start posting it on my social media for y'all to have access to it i'm not doing this shit to get a check let's be clear i'm doing this for these babies I'm doing this for these grannies and these grandpas, and y'all ass sitting there looking at me, the ones that personally know me, sitting there looking at you mad. And y'all need to come off that shit on some real shit.
Yeah, your presence is needed in the community. When you go in the grocery stores or the liquor store or wherever you might go, are they noticing you and know that you're running? Um, they don't notice me and know that I'm running like that, no. But they be noticing me from videos or something like that. So, yeah. But as much as running, no, because that's really kind of recent. And they would have to be on my IG or on my Facebook to see that. So I have just more people that's out there like in street gang or, you know, different stuff like that to see those interviews. Yeah, but that also shows you the power of media. So you keep putting it on media. They'll see you. They'll recognize yeah, you. Yeah, y'all know me. Mama keep throwing Boone. that energy y'all know, out there. Y'all know me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but my thing is stop being negative about someone that's actually trying to do something to help. If you're not going to help, then shut the fuck up. Wow. But don't start making up shit. She only doing this because of this and she only doing this because of that. No, I'm only doing this for y'all ass. And y'all the ones that's going to benefit from it because y'all are in my community. But yet y'all don't want me to get this position. Well, y'all not helping me get this position because either way it go, I'm going to get this position because God is on my side with everything. So I'm going to get this position. I'm putting in the actual work to get it, but it's for y'all. Duh. Well, miserable people and people with no hustle going to always be looking at your pockets. Uh, my advice to you is ignore the negativity, keep up with the positivity, and it's all going to fall in place. Yeah. Uh, you bring up you bring a very positive energy, just the way you talk, your swag, your smile, the way you dress, all of that. So, um, I don't see you losing. Me neither. I, mean, I think I'm, I, I got this. I got this because I have a lot of people that do have my back. So, I'm just moving forward, you know, and no difference than all the other things that I'm doing besides running for a city council, you know, with the interviews and all that, that's giving me more traffic with uh, people that support me that don't know me, you know, so it is what it is. And my, like I keep wanting to reiterate, stop being so negative about somebody that's actually doing them because I'm not doing this just to, I'm not doing this for likes. I'm doing it because I'm just finally at a point in my life where I want to show who I am. This is me, mm. period. And I'm going to do me, whether you like it or not. Now, you can get on the bandwagon or your ass can get left behind. Mm. It's your choice. At this time, can you show me your warehouse and what else you have going yes, on? Yes, I can. You want uh, me to do your drop? Yeah. And the cool part about this, what I like the most about this building, is this right here lifts all the way up. So, like, do a video shoot, you can bring a whole car up here. Oh yeah. Finish my little music. And I'm gonna um So where we at? Tell me where we at, what we looking at. Okay, right here is just my stuff. This makeup, whatever. But this is the uh computer lab. This right here is another office. And up in here is where we keep the um boxes. So you can go up in there. Okay. Okay, what's this right here? Well, this right here, we're going to the freezer. So you got it. I'll come in. What's, what do you have in the freezer? Right now, we have some meat. We have different stuff. You got to come see. Come on in. We got bacon, some chicken over here, some yogurt over there, um, different meat, chicken, uh, whole chickens. We have a bunch of stuff. Y'all left it open. Tell them they better like, share, and subscribe. Well, we appreciate the interview and everything that you're doing. I got you on your birthday, man. Thank you. you what, flowers? You ain't in this video. Why you hush? She I'm be oh, And oh. you just want to be all in and get <laughs> slide your ass back. I wasn't in. I was talking to my room. You they, just your voice. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's cool. But we appreciate everything you're doing and continue to do and wish you success.
Thank you. And come back. Come back soon. Matter of fact, I'm about to invite the Kev Mac show to a food giveaway, something big, so y'all can actually really see what, what it do. That's cool. We'll be here. We'll be like, here. share, and subscribe ASAP. <laughs>